Well, hi there. It's Sandy Alnock. I'm back, and I'm going to be journaling in 2 Thessalonians. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling, and that by his power, he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. And this particular page, I have made a wreath out of watercolors in an interleaved Bible, so it has blank pages in between. And I started by taking a roll of masking tape and drawing a circle around the outside and the inside of the roll with a pencil and then started painting leaves around it. And I just played around with different colors that are in my palette, different kinds of yellows and oranges and browns and greens and mixing them together, sometimes on the paper, sometimes in the palette and tested out a new brush as well. This is one that I hadn't played with a whole lot and I wanted to see what kinds of leaf shapes that it would make. Every brush you have is going to be different. Some will, will be better at one task than another. And you might, of course, want to use several brushes on this. But I wanted to see if I could do this whole thing and discover what kind of touch I need with this particular brush to accomplish different types of leaves. How light does the pressure have to be to use just the tip to make a little tiny stem and that kind of thing. And you'll see as this goes on, in the final steps of making the wreath portion, I'll go to darker colors, meaning thicker colors, I'm using thicker paint later, and adding little tiny details. And some of that will cover up leaves that I didn't like all that much, because some of these didn't come out all that great. So when you're doing something with this many layers, just add some berries, add a little tiny leaf or a little branch in front of something that didn't work out all that great because it's going to look beautiful anyway, even if an individual leaf has a little challenge to it. But in addition to this being a seasonally, seasonally appropriate, if I can even talk, type of image with all these beautiful fall colors, for me it's also a seasonal prayer for my heart right now. This is, this is kind of where I am. And the way that this prayer is written really spoke to me. And there's a few phrases in here that I'll call out that God may make you worthy of, of your calling, that I want to be worthy of my calling. I sometimes don't feel it. I've not been in a great place of late, and I haven't really felt worthy of sharing the gospel. I just feel like such a mess. Why would anyone listen to me? And that's not right. That's, that's what God calls me to do. And I need to not just give up and you know, be down on myself. I need to be what God has called me to be. And then it also says, by his power, that he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness. And the way that this is phrased, I really liked. It's by his power, of course. It's not by mine. But that he'd bring to fruition my desire for goodness. That he'd bring to fruition like, it may not always exist, but will he bring that to fruition in my life, the desire for goodness? Will he bring to fruition my every deed prompted by faith? Because it's not. I can just tell you that. <laughs> my, my deeds are often prompted by my own selfishness, not by, by faith and by love for my fellow man. It's not always that way, and it's it's hard when you come face to face with your own attitudes and realize they, they fall so short. But this prayer is that God, by his power, will bring these things to fruition in our lives. In this season that we're in, I think one of the things that's brought all this to the forefront for me is not having things be normal. And right now we're in the midst of a pandemic. Some of you live in towns where that may not be much of an effect. I live in a town within a county that's doing fine, but my town is the worst. We've had the worst numbers for the whole seven months or whatever we've been undergoing this. For whatever reason, I guess I have a dis disobedient town. I don't know. But it means that those of us with health conditions that make it unsafe for us to go do the normal things we used to do, don't get to do them. And I don't get to go out and do normal church things and meet with the groups that I normally meet with. And all of those things are not normal. Some of them have moved online, but nothing feels normal. And I feel like I'm not serving the way that I used to. 
But what I want is for God to show me what is the area that he wants me to serve in right now. One of my former pastors used to say that until God tells you you have a new assignment, you stay in the assignment you're in. Well, I'm in this assignment. and I want to learn from him what it is he wants me to do right now in the place that I'm in and stop whining about it and get busy doing what it is he has for me to do. And for right now, what he said was get back to making Bible journaling videos. So, okay, that is, that is what I can do in this time period. And so I'm back from my little break that I took. You may need to find what it is that you can do in your situation right now. Maybe it's posting a Bible verse every day on Facebook. I don't know. But if you're missing those opportunities to serve God and to serve his people, That might be some of the unease that we're feeling in this time. And asking him to bring back to fruition, bring to fruition those things that are within us that he calls us to might be just the prayer we need to get us into that next phase so that we live fully in this moment and just don't wish ourselves past it. Learn what God has for us right now and be ready for the next season when the next season finally comes. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful to somebody. It was therapeutic for me at the very least. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.